who better to help you with a video about a stitch and scream than a brand new spooky friend? Friends, hello. Welcome back to Amethyst Craftworks. I am Samantha, and welcome to a Stitch and Scream update indeed. Today, currently, as I'm filming this, it is the morning, so if I look a little bleary-eyed, <laughs> a little tired, that is why. However, I've got a good old cup of coffee here for the morning, so cheers to you. I hope you have something good to drink as well. Oh, oh, coffee, it feeds my soul, I'm telling you what, and <laughs> I need it today, because I am feeling very tired, but excited to share with you an update on the Stitch and Scream crochet along. Let me take another sip here real fast. Mm-hmm, from Jack. And Sally, <laughs> we'll set, set it down here. And yes, also, my new spooky friend, I thought he was very fitting to wear this morning in my Stitch and Scream update, because, hello, Stitch and Scream ghost? Come on, it fits so perfectly. So this pattern, before we get into anything Stitch and Scream related, this pattern is from my lovely friend, Heather the Crochet Witch. Hey girl, he is so stinking cute, I can't even put it into words. Look, he's even got a, a top to his, can I lean down, there you go. A top to his head, and it is just every kind of adorable. I love him. You can't really see him that well, thanks to the way that I'm sitting, but that's okay. He is here, he's keeping me company, he's keeping me warm on this chilly, this chilly morning, as is Jack and Sally. <laughs> and we are going to discuss the Stitch and Scream. So there are two, two, uh, crochet alongs that I am participating in this year. One is the Movie Marquee. Um, I'm actually hosting the Movie Marquee with my girls, Heather, Heather, <laughs> and Bella from Bella's Crocheted Gifts. Hello, Bella. Um, those videos come out much more frequently, of course. And the other one is the Stitch and Scream Crochet Along from Kayla from Alt Knots. Hi, Kayla, if you happen to see this. Um, their channel, their information, the blog posts, the Crochet Along Stitch, all that information down in the description. Check it out if you're curious. I will say, even though we are in May, it is so simple and not so strict with time that you could totally join in now if you really want to. And I know you want to, right? <laughs> it's been lots of fun. I really have enjoyed having a simple project to work on at the end of the night. That's what the Stitch and Scream has become for me. I sit in bed for like an hour or so just to unwind, de-stress, relax, and kind of turn my brain off because the stitches that Kayla has picked for the Stitch and Scream have been very simple, like one row repeat kind of stitches, and I very much appreciate that. And so, the update that I've got for you, sadly, no longer fits in my <laughs> project bag for the Stitch and Scream, which is this. We have gotten so big now that the only thing that fits in here is the yarn as I'm working with it. Otherwise, the actual project doesn't fit in here. Because I've got a <laughs> big old stack <laughs> of big squares to talk about today. 
So let's let's talk about them, shall we? <laughs> so my color scheme for the Stitch and Scream is it has evolved over time for sure. When I started, it was only going to be red, gray, and black. But then I had this yarn, which is gray and black variegated, right? And then I grabbed a yarn from Hobby Lobby in a Hobby Lobby shopping trip, which I'll link up here. Casey Curious. Um, I got it. I thought it would match great. I was like, ooh, another edition. Fabulous. And then I've got some sad news for you. <laughs> but that's that's neither here nor there. So I added a dark red tweed to my color palette. And I also have another idea for June's color. I've probably talked about this in every single video for the Stitch and Scream so far, in that every month I'm like, ooh, let's add something else. Ooh, let's add <laughs> this and that and whatever. So I'm sorry, but I think we're, we're updating the color palette for the first six months and then repeating those colors for the last six months. You get me? You feel me? I'm sure that you do. So... Let's talk about May. This is the square for May. Hold it up. Oh, you can totally tell. The red tweed, the dark red tweed that I got from Hobby Lobby is red with like black flecks in it. Black tweed. The black tweed is, or the tweed is black. There we go. Hold on. Maybe I need another sip of coffee here. Mm hmm wake my brain up a bit more so the, the the tweed is black on a red dark red background and I loved it it's really soft as well it is an I love this yarn print I think from Hobby Lobby um I loved it I loved working with it it is so soft and the stitch itself which is called the crunch stitch, I'm pretty sure. You can totally see, it's got really lovely texture. It's very textured, and the texture is only heightened by the fact that the yarn is very soft. It was an absolute dream to work with. Very happy with this choice for my blanket with one caveat. So you can see up here, I've got a stitch marker, which is almost at the end of a row with a short tail, right? Your girl lost a game of yarn chicken. <laughs> and I'm so sad and mad about it because all the stitches so far for the Stitch and Scream have been what I call yarn goblins, yarn eaters. They have taken up a lot of yarn per square. They are big squares. And hold on, I'm trying to pick out the red one. Because the red one is January. And this is the, like, the gauge for me. I'm trying to match this size, this shape, for every subsequent square, right? So, this used a ton of yarn. It used one full Red Heart Super Saber cherry and then like honestly maybe a half of a second one a third of a second one it used up a lot of yarn every subsequent month has also used up a lot of yarn so I don't know why when I bought this yarn from Hobby Lobby I could not tell you why I only picked up two I only had two skeins of it I guess the best explanation I've got is that it was really overwhelming in that store. Beyond overwhelming in that store. And I just zeroed in on this color and I was like, ooh, this could go in my Stitch and Scream. I'll just grab two and brain is just like going haywire in there, right? So I wasn't thinking straight, so I only got two. And this square for May, unfortunately is probably five 
six rows short of matching my uh, sample, my gauge, the pattern, the size that I am basing all my other squares off of. Let me see if I can show you here. Line them up at the bottom. <laughs> Set raw. Uh, that doesn't really show you anything. Here we go. So I'm. Ye oh, no. <laughs> Struggle is real this morning. Not enough coffee in me yet. There's probably not enough coffee in the world to wake me up today. But, like, I honestly, I think I'm probably five rows, six rows short of being the same size. I wanted to scream. I wanted to kick myself. But it does give me an excuse to do a little, a little shopping on the Hobby Lobby website just to try they're shipping instead of, you know, shopping um, in person for the first time. Now I'm going to try and test out their shipping. At least that's what I'm telling myself. I did do a little shopping on Hobby Lobby. I did get enough to not only finish this square, but also I don't know why if I thought I was going to add this color to my color scheme for the Stitch and Scream that I only got two anyway because the idea is to do two in each two squares in each color so you know july is going to be red again i've got plenty of red heart super saver cherry so why did i only get two if the intent is to do two of these very large squares again i could not tell you <laughs> i had a real dirt moment that's all i could say so I did do a little shopping on Hobby Lobby. It is coming. I did get a few other things. Maybe I'll show you. But at the very least, I did grab enough red tweed. I love this yarn to finish this square for May and to hopefully complete the second square in this color too. I got four. So fingers crossed that's enough. I also got a few other things that maybe might end up in the Stitch and Scream. I did ponder one particular color for June, so in June. I've got that coming as well. I do have some other yarn that would work for the idea that I had in my head. We'll see which one I like better, and I will show you, of course, in June when I've got that square done. And I'll also, sh I'll also show you this square 100% completed because sadly it's close, but not quite. And yeah, <laughs> that's my update for the Stitch and Scream. I really like this color combo. Now I had these all nicely folded before I started and now they're just a jumble. But this is my <laughs> this is my color palette. Red, gray, black, dark red, and I think white is going to go in the mix. White, you know, like my ghosty friend here. White is going to go in here too. And the whole like kind of inspiration has also changed as the months have gone by. My inspiration now is to make a new blanket for my bed. And I'm going to buy like a whole new bed set, a whole new comforter set sheets, pillowcases, all that stuff to match this color, color scheme, this color palette. This is, this is my inspiration. So white will go in there too, very likely because, you know, I think black, white, gray, red, dark red, fabulous together. I love it. And I love these two. They're just, you know, a mess currently. <laughs> a mess. A mess, but a fun mess, a colorful mess, a, a lovely colorful mess, right? But yeah, that's, that's my update. No, it's not, wait. So I set this here as well because I wanted to tell you. The furls hook, this is really dark, so I'm not sure if it's going to show up 
on camera. Kind of, you can kind of see that eye there in the um, engraving. This is a Furl's wood streamline hook. And this beautiful, beautiful baby was sent to me by Tina. That um, Happy Mail as well, I'll link that up there too, because that was emotional and incredible and I can't even put it into words. And she sent me essentially a full set of Furl's hooks. And this is the first time that I have used a wood Furl's hook. And Miss Tina, she told me my stitches would just glide with this hook. And girl, you were not kidding. This hook was fabulous to use. It is so smooth, so lightweight. I just was stitching along like nothing else, and it was fabulous. And so I've got yet another furls to add to my rotation now of 5.5 furls hooks that I'm currently using for the Stitch and Scream because Kayla from Alt Knots uses furls and I love this hook. This is the only one out of the set that I have used so far and it was fantastic. I really loved it. And so yeah, I want I set it here in my hook coffin before I put it back in that beautiful case just so I remembered to <laughs> show it off and mention it on my Stitch and Scream update. And so now I think I have mentioned everything that I wanted to mention on this morning update for the Stitch and Scream. Mm-hmm. I need like six more of these. <laughs> And so while I make myself another hefty pot of coffee, I will just let you go. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like the Stitch and Scream, if you're joining in on the Stitch and Scream, give me a like and please subscribe today as well. I've got updates coming for the Stitch and Scream in June, July, August, and so on, just like the movie Marquee. And if you are joining in the Stitch and Scream, leave me a comment and let me know. Let's discuss some fun, spooky, stitchy things, right? And so until I've got another update, until I've got another something for you, I am just going to let you go. Take care. Goodbye.